Hey guys, it's Clay on the trail. Um, back in my shop. This will be my larger um, ammo can stove build. I will be doing a catalytic heat. If you haven't caught my smaller version, go back and check it out. Uh, I started out with a smaller ammo can. I made it catalytic heat, but the burn chamber ended up being so small I took it out. But I have one that is big enough now that will work. This is my larger can. It is a small arms AMM box MK1. And uh, it says on here somewhere, I've been cutting on this with a plasma torch, so it's a little hot. This carried 200 rounds of 20 millimeter links. Not a military guy, so I really don't know what that means. But this box is way heavier. The box itself, before I even started playing with it, weighs just about 18 pounds. I don't think my whole other stove weighs much over five. So way more to it. So I started with a straight edge, cutting the straight sides and the top and the bottom of my door, which is going to be eight inches by nine inches to give you guys a idea of how much bigger this stove is. Uh, I'm going to weld the hinges on on this side over here before I cut the door. I like to do that. It's way easier to keep the door in. Tack your hinges on and then finish cutting the door out and it's right where it needs to be. So let's put some hinges on it. Hinges on. Uh, not the greatest welder ever. I also removed a bunch of hardware. There was a handle uh, and one of these hinges on the front that were in the way. So I drilled all of the spot welds off of those and I filled the holes back in. I need to go back through now and finish all my corners on my door and we'll pop the door open. I bound one of the hinges just a little bit so it's not quite as smooth as I wish it was. But it's a door nonetheless. We'll uh, clean up the edges around and come up with a latch. I'm going to do my latch a little different on this one. I think I'll just do a bar across something that catches something just right here that sticks out a little bit that you can manipulate, but I've yet to come up with that. While I was, uh, before I put my welder away, I guess. I went ahead and put the handle back on, but I welded it solid um, so it doesn't interfere with the opening of the door. So we'll we'll clean it up and build the latch. Okay, I assembled the latch. It's This is temporary. I don't really like the way it came together. It works. But I need to tighten this up just a little bit. The door is eighth of an inch off. I can do better than that. I ran into, let me set you up here. This issue, this pipe didn't have the crimped end to make them fit together. And that just doesn't work. So I'm making my own. I was using a pair of channel locks, or channel locks, goodness gracious. Needle nose pliers that were just a little bit too big. So we're gonna do this again. And all I'm doing is making the diameter, the whatever, the circumference, the whatever, the pipe, smaller. So it'll go in. On my last stove, I used the fitting. Um, that I took off another piece. I went to the, well, I had some parts picked up for me. 
and brought to me. And I wanted another piece like I had bought before. This stupid thing was like 30 bucks. Okay, there we go. Homemade fitting, it's not beautiful, but it works. And that's what we're looking for. So, the next step, the there's blocks on top of this can that are rectangle, not square. So I'm going to do an oval shape for the pipe is why I, I wanted that pipe to fit together. Um, by the time it gets up, you know, whatever high for the next joint, it'll be round again. So I'm going to cut an oval here and look at the amount of space a guy has to cook on this thing. This stove is going to be, you know, I'll be able to put the same size firewood I put in my house in this stove. It will last all night long and I probably put this thing in my shop and heat my shop with it. I may be looking for a hot tent stove, something in between this one and the other one. I just don't have the ammo can for it, but that will be something I will be searching for next. But let's get this one tied up first. All right, I got the hole cut for the pipe and I have the chunk of pipe up in it. I got a little overzealous on this one side. So I have some stove door gasket that will help seal that up. And this is the high temperature stove gasket stuff that I used on my other stove. Um, most silicones are good for like 500 degrees and they cook up in a real stove. This stuff's good for 2000 degrees. It got real brittle on me last time, but it stayed in place. So we'll glue this in place and see if it'll create the seal I need. So yesterday, I kind of took a day off, but I took the stove outside and I just, I had a huge fire in it and I just burned all the paint and everything off of it. I learned that on the last one I made. Uh, you paint it and then take it out and burn it. Well, the heat resistant paint will stick, but the original paint on these things bubbles up and falls off. So it was hotter than crap last night. I couldn't bring it inside and I left it out overnight. It's about five degrees right now. So this thing is thawing back out. It was so cold I didn't want to touch it. Anyway, I burned it all out, got rid of all the paint. So when I go forward with it from now on, it's for, it's for real, the final product. I got a crazy fire going in this. I know this is only like aluminum. It's heating duct for um, dryers and um, airflow, stuff like that. Heating, not made to be fire. But man, I melted the crap out of the tip of this thing. This stove knows how to make heat. It's going to be a good one. So I took a rag and wiped all the paint off of this. So I burned it out. Actually still has a little paint on it, but nothing that's going to burn anymore. It, down to the primer at least. I've pulled the lid off. And what I've decided to do is rather than attach the baffle inside the stove, with this little raised area here, I'm gonna build a little piece of sheet metal that'll come across and go down and I'll just tack it onto here. It'll come from this back piece to, what is this, two thirds of it? And that forces the smoke to travel. It just burns it cleaner and is more, uh, more efficient. So let's get that piece built. Okay, while we're focusing on working on this lid, it should be noted that all ammo cans have a rubber gasket that goes all the way around the lid to create a airtight seal, watertight seal, whatever. If you don't take that out when you first fire this up, you'll sure know about it. That will 
melt and be disgusting. Okay, little creative origami. I made sure that none of my edges stick past where they should. Where this is indented and I rate this is about a half inch and this is a half inch so it gives me an inch gap for the smoke all the way through there so I'm gonna once again just drill some holes along the edges here and I'll just do a quick tack weld all right three tacks up each side two in the back it's on there Next I'll be taking some, I think it's half inch square tubing. I've cut to pieces and a piece of quarter inch round rod. And I will be uh, welding these pieces of square onto the corners like so. And then these legs will just slide into place. The bends here will keep it from going smaller and these will store inside the stove when I'm moving it. So I got one end built. I need to bend the other end and we'll weld everything in place. Okay, base on. It's, it's crazy stable. And I've got enough of a spring in it that when I pick it up, they don't come out. But I can pinch them together, slide it out. And they'll ride, they'll ride inside. So as far as an ammo can stove, that's done. It's finished product right there. Um, gonna work on running a catalytic burn on it. Oh, one more thing. I do need to put a band in it. I had to keep the door propped open to get this thing to burn. It's actually tight. I put that extra stove gasket I had in here to replace the rubber gasket, and it doesn't breathe. Even with the hole around the door, it doesn't get enough air. So I am going to put a hole here with, a, with an adjustable cover over it so I can adjust the airflow on it, and then it will be done. But I am going to still work on a catalytic version of this i just i'm not sure how or where it's going to go i'm not going to build a big elaborate um sheet metal structure like i did on my last build i'm trying to figure some out with some copper pipe maybe where it will draw air from the front take it up around the back up and then back in and eject it right where the, sh the baffle shelf is Yet, yet to be determined though. I may go uh, fire this thing up. I got uh, several projects I need to get done today that uh, this is pretty much it for this for today. But I will get back to this and we'll tie up all the loose ends here. Okay, simple design. Two holes, swivel, can adjust the airflow. I think she's ready to burn. Okay, I made one more change with this before I was done. I didn't like the seal I was getting on the stovepipe, so I made a collar. I'm just trying to figure out how to permanently attach it. It's pretty well just wedged in there right now, but I'd like it a little more secure. But I am going to take it out the way it is right now and fire it up. see what kind of burn we get with the baffle and uh, I extended the pipe up a little bit it should draw this thing should draw really really well okay I got a good fire of small sticks I will be putting a larger log in it when I get it going I'm able to adjust the airflow here pretty easy. So, so far it's turning out great. I wanted to show a comparison here, if I can get out of the way, of the stove I just built. And then um, my next 
project is going to be an in-between. So this is a 20 millimeter, I think, rocket ammo box, 50 caliber ammo box, and a 40 millimeter ammo box. And that will be my next one. And I actually think it's going to end up being just the right size. Uh, this one's too big. Uh, that one's too small. And that one's just right. So to give a little understanding, I can put pieces of wood that are the same size as this stove inside of this stove. So your burn time, I mean, is going to be crazy longer. Might actually make it through the night, um, especially if you're able to control the airflow. I thought about putting another uh, control in the flue. Haven't decided against it yet. So since I've been working on a hot tent stove, an ammo can stove, I have got these tarps out. I've been trying to figure out every configuration. I've tried A-frames, lean-tos, these pyramids, and you know, a guy can sleep in there, but I, I would have to use my smallest stove and it would be I'd have to put it right in the doorway. Like I just haven't figured the right configuration out. And then it dawned on me. Um, well, I happen to own an Eskimo quick fish. I wish it was a fat fish, but it's a quick fish. Not quite as roomy as uh, interior room anyway. And a little bit of ingenuity. I put a tent jack in it. And it turns out it's going to be just right. I got four windows, room for my cot. Uh, Cash won't like the fire, so he's got this little spot behind here. And check this out. Got us a fire going. It's a little smoky when I open the door. I think I made my baffle on the top too short, so it's having a hard time drawing the air through it. But I, I also remembered that I have a pack stove. Like it folds down pretty flat, and it had some actual steel um, chimney pipe. Check that out, already made. Didn't have to make it or buy it. It was gifted to me from my dad years and years ago. So, I am going on a camp out tomorrow night and I'm not going ice fishing. I'm just going winter camping and I'm gonna burn this a little bit today and make sure it works before I go to the mountains and do it. I don't wanna have a, have a fire here have any issue here but um, man I'm really hopeful and I used I had some welding um, curtain it's just fiberglass I just made a tent stove out of it and I got some gorilla tape and taped it together heated it up with a heat gun so it'll actually stick is my hope anyway well, we'll see how it works